What is up, YouTube? Back again with another video. In today's video, man, we're gonna be going over everything that I've learned over my over four and a half days of straight grinding, putting over a hundred hours in MW3. Yes, that is correct. Over 100 hours. Actually, more like 200 because I ended MW2 off with around a thousand hours, a thousand fifty, and um. I'm sitting at 1,200 hours right now on this game. So, technically speaking, I've put like 150, 200 hours. But, like, physically, I want to say it's probably some of that time was on multiplayer. Some of that time was on, um, you know, menus and campaign and all that. So, everything I've learned that you can use to unlock Borealis Camo. Quick, easy, and nice, and fun by yourself, solo. This is a kind of solo guide. This is not with teammates. Um, I actually believe that using teammates... Can either be faster or slower depending on um, the people you're playing with. So if you're playing with random, slower. If you're playing with friends who listen to you, follow directions, you'll probably unlock it a little bit quicker because you can stay in the higher tier zones. But this is a complete solo guide on how to unlock Borealis. Um, and we're just going to be sitting in the menu or talking. We're going to go over my stats here in a little bit. And then we're just going to sit here in the menu and talk like an old school video. Just, you know, how I used to do them with me just sitting here in the menu talking to you guys. So... Let me turn the music off, because I don't know if that's loud for you boys. So let me let me just turn this music off, so that way you guys can actually hear me talk. Okay, because because it's loud, all right? So, first off, this is what Borealis looks like currently. And it looks phenomenal, man. It looks phenomenal. I'm loving it. I am starting the, officially going to start the Ultra Mastery grind. Um... Probably tomorrow, uh, I do, I want to try to get at least one Asari full done today, so I can have a calling card for when I'm playing MP, so I'll probably get one of them, one of them done, probably like the G36 or something, this one right here, since I, this is my favorite gun in the game currently. Um, ACR is great and all, but there's something, something feels so good about the G36, man, I just can't explain it, dude, it just feels so good. Um, but, so let's go over some of the things you're going to need in your armoring. Um, so the gear system is pretty interesting. So you can see here I have three geared characters. Now I didn't touch a single one of those characters while I was grinding. That was something I did. Um, I think I was, I was waiting for something. Um, I think it was like the hour or two I was waiting for, for the double up and XP weekend started. And so I was just, I was waiting cause I just didn't want to grind the guns out at that time. So I did these two, but this entire grind was done with one singular character, and this character I only died with, I think twice. Twice. That's it. Out of all my games, almost 200 games, I've only died and lost my gear twice. Um, a couple times when I first started the game, obviously, but when I started the official camel grind, which was in the beginning, middle of last week, um, I did not, I've only died twice. So... Let's go over some things that will help you in the long run. Let's go over schematics first. So schematics are going to be a big thing. Um, you can see I have 11 total. I have a pack punch crystal. I have um, jug, dead shot, PhD, speed, stamina, tombstone, um, and I believe that's it. Yes, that's it. I'm still needing quick revive, elemental, and death. Otherwise, I have pretty much all the important perks I have. You're going to want to be running a lot of um, dead shot for camos. Just makes killing bosses a lot easier. Jug, speed, and cinema, you're probably the most three of the most important perks. Just because I think the game is just so less enjoyable when those are not activated. And then Tombstone. Tombstone is really great if you're someone who's dying a lot. If you're dying a lot, this is gonna be good because you can get your you can get like your back punch crystals back um, that you farmed on that match, which we're gonna get into in a few minutes. Analogs, I have these three. And then I have the ray gun schematic. Ray gun schematic, I got my first try. I literally just ran into the tier three zone when I watched a video. Did one of the missions, uh, cargo delivery mission. It spawns there. I think once in a great moon it can spawn, but you can sometimes force it to spawn. Um, but it has like a fifty percent chance of giving you a ray gun. Uh, I got mine the first try, so that's a W. Um, and then over here in your stash, I recommend in your stash. Oh, by the way, I want to make a video, a separate video on this, um, how to keep one weapons, but you can keep one weapons uh, that you find in the world, as long as they're not through the mission box. So if you find them through like a, a challenge or whatever, you can keep them as long as you don't activate them. So, uh, so if you just stash them in your bag, you can keep them. But I have a bigger video coming on that soon. 
here's what I recommend keeping in your in your stash. Do not keep perks that uh, are not important in here. Okay, keep only blue wrenches, purple uh, purple wrenches, or legendary wrenches. I know they're not all wrenches, like they're some pliers, but I don't care. Okay, we're calling them wrenches because it's stupid. Um, <laughs> so keep all those the blue rare on uh, the blue purple, and orange are your three high tiers, and then keep a pack punch crystals, these things. These things are insanely helpful, especially if you're grinding the pack punch camos for Zircon. It's going to be very nice to just spawn in with your gun and immediately begin progressing. Now, there's two different methods you can do. The first method, and I think this is a more consistent method, is to grind um, strongholds. Um, basically, strongholds are these effective strongholds are basically like cyst buildings full of cyst you shoot the cyst um now sometimes the cysts drop pack crystals but majority of the time i found mine through opening um chest after beating the stronghold second method is way more inconsistent in my opinion is not even worth trying to attempt and that is by going through contracts especially in the tier two area because tier two area gives a lot of pack punch crystals um for for quest um but again, very inconsistent. A lot of times you don't, a lot of times you do. It just really depends on that game and those contracts. But to keep your inventory full of them, I would recommend not keeping green wrenches unless like that's the only thing you have. Like I've been keeping some green because I just recently, within the last few games, got these. Like last night when I was grinding, I got these last few wrenches. Um, but normally I would delete these green ones because they're not even worth carrying um, in the long run. Some other things not to keep in here besides the green wrenches, and I would say useless perks. And by useless perks, I mean things like elemental, um, especially if you have uh, the... Um, if you're running games back and back and back and back and back from each other, then yes, you, I just recommend keeping some perks. But for the most part, you can, what you can do is when you go into a game, use whatever perks you have, and then collect more through the strongholds. And you should have enough perks. If you do about 10 strongholds, you should get all the perks in the game again. And you handpick the perks you want for the next match. Keep them in your bag. And then when you exfil, they're already in your bag. And then when you, you can just, you don't have to, like, you don't have to take them off your, your, your you know, your backpack, your rucksack. And then, um, if you have pack much crystals or anything else, you can put them in the bag. Um, because, again, the bag is only, the stash itself is only 10 slots. So it's not a whole lot of slots. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, other things that you should probably get not put in your stash just for for your sanity. Um, unless you're doing no specific challenges, what I would recommend is go through your guns that you're working on. Say if you're working on assault rifles, go through every single assault rifle and see which assault rifles need what weapon mods. Then you save one of each of those weapon mods because you can probably do a weapon mod challenge in one game. Because most of them are get like 100 kills or 250 kills with this weapon mod. And those are really easy because you just throw the weapon mod on your gun and you're good to go. It, uh, you don't have to get... So, like, for example, let's we'll use an example because it's, it's easier to explain this way because this game has a terrible way of explaining things. If it's, say, Brain Rot and it's asking for toxic kills, that's Brain Rot. Now, Brain Rot, as many of you guys know, is when you shoot a zombie and it turns onto your side. You make it Brain Rotted. You make it yours, pretty much. Um... Well, it doesn't have to be those kills for that camo. It can just be kills while Brain Rot is active when you're done. Okay? Um, that's all you have to do. <laughs> literally. That's that's literally all, all you have to do. You're good. Um, so very, very, very odd that they... That's what they chose. But nonetheless, that's that's what all you have to do. Now, um, one weapon mod you will never need... Um, I did not use it one time throughout my entire camo grind was Shatter Blast. Shatter Blast was not needed. It was used for missions, and I am working on missions now, um, today, but missions-wise, you have to use it, but for guns, you're good. You don't need Shatter Blast, but you will need um, quite a bit of, of Dead Wire, quite a bit of Cairo, and quite a bit of, um, of the Brain Rot. Now, don't keep an influx of those, because, again, you can get the schematics for them like me i was able to use most of my schematics for like for ones that needed like napalm or dead wire or brain watt um then i only had to really collect cryo um so don't keep your like sat full of shit that's useless keep it full of things that are good like uh, pack punch um like you can see pack punch crystals or blue purple orange wrenches or even even wonder weapons that you find around the map because those could become useful down the road now 
What I recommend for tacticals and lethals, I recommend decoys and throwing knives, just because they're great. Um, probably the best of each. And then energy mine, something I used a lot, and we'll see this in my stats here in a minute when we go to that. Um, I use energy mine majority of my grind. Towards the end of my grind, I was using a lot of frenzied. Um, for uh, the camo grinds, for um, getting kills shortly after activating a, uh, a field upgrade, I would recommend Aether. I know a lot of people are saying Frenzied. I didn't use Frenzied. I, <laughs> I didn't know Frenzied would count because I never really used Frenzied when I was doing those specific grinds. And by the time I learned that Frenzied could work, I had already pretty much finished all but like one of my my um, kills after activating, you know, whatever. And I was using Aether because Aether is the only other one when you activate it, you actually stay within the field upgrade. So like Frost, Tesla, Healing, and Energy Mine, those all... When you use them, they're instant. There's no time between using. So I recommend Aether because if Aether, if you time it correctly, you can get about 50, 40 to 50 kills per activation. So I like to save all the zombies up to a horde, whatever gun I'm using, and then just activate it, immediately start shooting, even if it's hit fire, into the horde, killing as many as you possibly can. Um, that's what I recommend. But again, Frenzy Guard does work, and Frenzy Guard does last longer. Um, even though it's the same amount of time, it's 10 seconds for both. Uh, that 10 seconds on Frenzy was way longer. It's a long, longer 10-second uh, time period. But that's what I recommend for that. Guns, I'd recommend spawning in with a primary, but also when you're spawning in with primaries, grind your secondary, your contraband. Because depending on if you're finished Act 1 or 2, depends on if you have insured slots. If you have two insured slots, then great. Spawn in with both guns with your builds. Fine. Great. If you don't, like I was, I didn't ground my Act, my missions um, for this then I'd recommend um, saving up Contraband Sash. Now, you can see my Contraband is kind of empty. That's because as I was doing guns, I was either saving them or deleting them. So if it was beginning the grind, say I, ha I tried to have at least one of every style of gun. So like um, that way I was working on two different categories in every match. So like if I was doing an AR, I tried to have an SMG. If I had an SMG up there, then I would try to have a handgun down here and so on and so forth. When you're fill, well, filling up your contraband stash, do keep in mind um, that you don't want to have MW2 guns. Unless you're working on the MW3 and MW2 grind at the same time, which I do not recommend. I recommend you split them in half because the MW2 grind is a lot longer. Uh, it's 51 guns instead of 36 over here in MW3. But if you are um, doing only MW3, then keep MW3 only guns in here. Get rid of like the M13C that I, you see I have in here. Just because I was, these are guns I had left over from when I was doing the boss kills. So with like, melees and stuff. But normally, it would only be MW3 guns, and trust me, it'll make your life easier, because then you can spawn with two guns. And if you lose guns, or if you finish the secondary gun, and there's still time in match, and you want to start doing another, you can just drop the, third, the second gun, pick up a new gun that you didn't grind yet, and so on and so forth. When you're building guns, just keep in mind that you don't need it to be speedy, but you also don't want it to be super, super slow. So, like, I... I did a lot of builds very similar to this, um, which were sp kind of speedy, but had a high damage barrel, a high damage muzzle, um, and a high round magazine. That's kind of like the standard build that I went with. Um, pretty much all my guns, for the most part. Um, LMGs and that were really fun, by the way. Just a side note. So let's go over to my stats and see... Actually, let's look at challenges real quick. So if you didn't know already, uh, by the time you're done doing your camo grind you'll probably have at least three mastery calling cards i had about three uh my total grind um so that's pretty cool and then armory as well armory is something also that you'll get a majority of army unlocks if you're keeping up with them you'll have most of them done um you can see here i have most of the armory challenges completed um including the mastery calling card which you can see right here that's the mastery calling card so stats wise You'll have roughly, so the kills is kind of weird because I have 142,000 kills. But roughly, if you're not grinding levels in zombies, then roughly you're only going to need around 50,000 or so for the camo grind. A little over, a little bit over 50,000, just because of there's a lot of guns that require 250 kills. No one near as, as demanding as and of Cold War. Cold War was 2,500 per gun, uh, multiple times, <laughs> multiple times. Um, but here you'll average about. 4,000 kills per gun, so uh, that's a good chunk of kills, but then again, I was also leveling up my guns through zombies as well, so keep that in mind. 
So I have 160 exfil success by exfils, only 12 failed exfils, and about nine of those, 10 of those were probably from the first two or three days, and I was trying to figure out how the whole mechanics of the game worked. Um, and only had like two fail exfils um, total, right? Um, one of those was the game's fault. It literally just threw me off the helicopter, off the map. So that's great. Um, I had 172 total deployments with 142k kills, 12 deaths, obviously. 738 contracts completed. You can see that's a massive amount of contracts completed. Um, highest kills for my deployment was 3,000. I didn't say a match was very long. I know some people like to say at the very end. When you're running levels, the, only the first two, 750 kills count full amount of XP. They're after that, it's only half the XP. So I recommend not staying past 750 kills. So... Um, if you're doing a contract, if you stay in that contract and you get to 12,000 points, you're pretty much at 750 kills. Or if you're just running around killing zombies and you get to 12,000 points, you should be around 750 kills. Um, weapons. So let's look at the view. Uh, you can see here, I really like this setup, by the way. I'm not sure if anyone else has actually been looking at this chart. It's a really nice chart to kind of give you an idea of your of your kills. So you see my overall weapon percentages. My some ARs and SMGs are kind of the dominant force just because there's so many more of those than all you know, the other rifles now i didn't realize this until now uh, a couple days ago but the melee i was confused why my melees weren't counting melee is only counting the shield so from mw2 so i was very confused about that but it's just the shield if you go to your secondaries if you hit triangle when on um, playstation you can see your actual melees which right now i'm seeing around 2,000 kills kills melees so very cool. Um, if you're running, if you're trying to do bossing, like boss battle fights and all that, run this RGL, by the way. Pack, double pack punch, triple pack punch, RGL is mental, as long as you run PhD. Run PhD. So let's go to weapons, and you can see here, Holger's my best one right now, just because the G36 is such a good gun, man. It's just so much fun to use. Um, critical rate, obviously the M4 is going to be highest critical rate, just because of the fact that I only have one kill with it. So, like, <laughs> it's kind of like... Um, the only gun, right? And then equipment, throwing knife. I've only have since only have sixteen kills. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. I'm just, don't mind that. Uh, Molotov is, I'm sorry, is my most used uh, equipment for some reason. It has eight hundred eight hundred eighteen kills. I think it's because it's one of the ones I end up picking up a lot of times in game. It's the same with the uh, Casimir. But obviously, again, throwing knife over your best option just because they're quick, easy. Um, in tier one, you can go through an entire stronghold just using throwing knives. And then, obviously, acquisitions. My most is the rare ether tool. And the uncommon ether tool, right? And then the pack punches. I almost have 100 pack punch extraction uh, crystals as well. Feel upgrades. You can see here, again, massive, massive difference in what I've been using. For 13,000 kills with energy mine compared to the second best, which is for some reason is saying the RGL and the RPG. I, I don't know what's up with these. I... Because I'm assuming this is supposed to be heat, like the supposed to be a healing reward in here, and then also you're supposed to have the aether. But I guess because technically they're not killing involved score uh, field grades, they're not counted. But for some reason these are. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. But Tesla and Frost are very low. I just really don't use them that often. So that's that. Let's go over to leaderboards because I know some of you guys uh, were interested in my leaderboard position. So right now, career, it does not say I am, for some reason it says I'm not, like I'm in 0%. I don't know what that, why it's doing this. So we go to kills, I'm 808 in the world. Uh, if you guys are not seeing my name, it's because I don't have a thing. But if you look at the bottom of the screen, you guys can see it. Obviously, it's 808 in the world. For extraction, again, not showing up for some reason. And then critical damage, which is what I was talking about yesterday. I kept calling it extraction, but it wasn't. It was a critical rate. I'm 766 in the world. Um, but if we tally those two up, I'm around 900 in the world career. That's what it should be. Um, if we look at the weekly, uh, our current season, I don't think we are any different, right? Yeah, I don't think we're any different. But... That's the stats. So let's go over some other things that I would recommend. First off, grind now. Grind seriously, grind now because we have double up and XP active until the 27th. Okay, so definitely be grinding now. Other things. If you're playing solo, especially solo, I want you to farm the fuck out of escorts, outlast contracts, 
and bounties, depending on the situation that you need. So if you need um, boss kills for like uh, uh, for uh, Serpent Knight, or some guns require a certain amount of boss like Mimics or Manglers or Disciples, seriously farm those bounties and farm it. And also, if you're joining a do get lots like lots of kills, farm the escorts because escorts give you a lot of zombie kills and a lot of dog kills and a lot of Mangler kills too. And that's only in Tier 1. I'm only talking about Tier 1. Tier 2 is a whole different can of worms uh, when it comes to the amount of um, items you get. Uh, when you were grinding, I would say be, be efficient. So um, go, for, like, go for those high kills uh, areas. Don't dick around with um, other contracts. Don't dick around with traveling. Try to be as quickly as possible. Mark shit. Even if you're playing solo, mark shit for yourself. Uh, it makes your life so much easier. You're not searching for anything. You know exactly where it is. Um, keep self revive stashed on you. So if you do go down, you will go down. I've went down probably over a hundred times during this grind. Um, you can self revive and you'll be all right. Okay. Um, try not to go out of your way to help people. I know it's kind of dicky, but it's the truth. If there are uh, 300 meters or closer, help them. But if they're beyond 500, 400 meters, then um, I would say let's see if someone else helps them. Just because that, especially if you're trying to do a contract, it will take time out of your day and out of your grind. So keep that in mind when you're grinding. Um, also, if you're leveling up your character still, I would recommend getting the armory stuff done first. Get your get maxed out level wise, get the armory done, and then start grinding again. Um, unless you're able to do two things at once, but it can help to get the armory guns unlocked first. Um, but with that being said, man, that's pretty much all the tips I have. It's really just a point and shoot situation. As long as you're paying attention to your challenges, and doing them, you'll be all right. Uh, it'll take about two and a half days. You can see here on my stats that we have about four days time played on zombies. That is about the average I see that it takes, maybe a day or two less, depending on how efficient you are. I wasn't the most efficient player because I didn't have my guns maxed out to begin with. I know a lot of guys who um, were like the first person in the world to get this camo were guys who had already gotten the interstellar camo, so they had done all their grinding with multiplayer. And when they came over, they just had to do challenges. And obviously, it's going to be like, with MW2 grind, especially if you have Orion on everything, like I do, I have all 77 guns Orion, then it's obviously going to make your life way more easier when it comes to doing camera grinds but with that being said man i'm gonna leave the video here man i have some other stuff planned i do want to do some multiplayer today with the boys so um we'll be probably live streaming that later uh but yeah i love you guys from kind hope this guy video helped you guys your borealis grind because borealis is dope